hi everyone um and to those of you tuning in thank you for joining us today as we dive into the world of uh, talent acquisition learning and development opportunities at technicolor studios um, my name is heidi carde i'm the global head of admissions for the tcs academy um and i'm joined today by uh many of my colleagues uh, so maybe we can go around and everyone can uh, introduce themselves and uh, the position that uh, that they hold at technicolor I'll go first. Um, my name is Michael. I am the regional Technicolor Creative Studios Talent Acquisition Lead for Canada. Um, so I oversee um, all the recruiters that recruit outside of the academy. Hi, my name is Jacob. I'm one of the animation trainers for the Virtual Academy. Uh, I run the North American animation courses. And hi, my name is Amba, and I am a alum from the Technicolor Academy and now an animator at MPC. Amazing. Well, thanks so much for, for being here, everybody. Um, before we jump into further dis the discussions, um, for um, those of you that are joining us uh, through our YouTube streaming uh, and that might not have heard about the company before uh, or, you know, are unfamiliar with the work that we do. So uh, Technicolor Creative Studios, uh, Talent and Academy, hire and develop talent for Technicolor's visual effects studios, um, such as uh, MPC, The Mill, Micros Animation, and uh, Technicolor Games. Um, we have studios and continuous opportunities all over the world in various locations, including Toronto, Montreal, uh, Los Angeles, London, Bangalore, uh, Mumbai, Paris, Berlin, and Adelaide. Um, on my end, I oversee uh, the Technicolor Creative Studios Academy admissions, so uh, taking in uh, candidates uh, such as Amba, uh, who went through our academy, making sure uh, that, you know, the, the enrollment process runs smoothly. So I can maybe speak a little bit more about um, the academy and, and what we do there. So the TCS Academy that we call Technicolor Creative Studios Academy offers uh, free virtual courses that lead to recruitment opportunities uh, within Technicolor Studios. So our programs are a great way for either recent grads or novice artists or artists coming from, you know, um, Connex industries to get a foot in the door that are interested in, in VFX and to specialize and polish their skill sets uh, and come out of the Academy studio ready. So we offer courses for Montreal, Toronto, London, Bangalore and Adelaide locations. Um, and we offer courses in various uh, departments and disciplines such as animation, uh, lighting, we do uh, creature effects as well, uh, modeling, and many more. Uh, and in order to enroll, it's really, really simple. You just have to go onto our site. It's uh, tcstalent.com slash learning. And there you can see all of the different locations and all the different uh, disciplines that we offer. And you can apply directly with your resume and demo reel there. Um, the academies last anywhere between eight weeks to 14 weeks, depending on the discipline that you're enrolling into. Um, and we ask uh, all students basically to perform a standardized uh, skills test in order to be admitted into the into the courses. Um, the courses run full time, so it's a Monday to Friday, 40 hours a week. And uh, the objective is really to get you studio ready on the flip side and uh, potentially hire you into our studios ourselves. If we do end up um, offering you a position within Technicolor Studios, uh, the, uh, the, the students also get a uh, hiring bonus as well. So it's a nice little incentive. Um, so that's a, a, the spiel on my end. Um, we're lucky enough to have, uh, you know, one of our trainers here uh, from Animation, Jacob, that presented himself earlier. So Jacob, maybe you can speak a little bit more about the day-to-day -day activities of Academy, you know, what students that are hoping to enroll can, can expect when they're going through the courses. Yeah, sure. Um, so the courses themselves are, are tried to we try to set them up in, in a very similar way to what uh, life would be like working in a studio uh, on the floor. We have daily calls every day as a group uh, where we go over the assignment and uh, what the and, and everyone's work. So we go through um, a few hours of dailies and the last, rest of the day is, is left for you to, to work on the assignment. It's very fast paced. You have maybe a week. Some of the longer assignments are two weeks. Um, but it's constant contact every day uh, and, and feedback from myself, and we get it to also bring in uh, eight, uh, heads of departments and supervisors from the studios to come and talk about what it's like and to give feedback. So you have a direct line to people who you can actually be working with in the future there. Um, we just, we kind of push you until you can like get 
as far as you can across the eight weeks and try to create uh, as much great stuff for your demo reel or for to like show every aspect of the discipline that will help you fit into the studios. Fantastic. And the courses all are they're they're all full time, right? So um, in terms of like classes and scheduling and workload, uh, you know, what what does that look like and what time of like what type of time commitment uh, should students be willing to put into this? Yeah, absolutely. So it really is a 40 hour week kind of thing. Sometimes sometimes more. It all depends on uh, how. Um, I mean, 40 hours definitely so you can push yourselves that as far as you can go. Uh, sometimes more if you really want to like go even, even further, which um, it's kind of what happens in in the real world sometimes because you don't always get done at the end of the day. Sometimes you need to work a little bit more, uh, but we do try to keep it within that that time frame of, of what an actual week is. But it's 100% full time. We have the, uh, the the assignments are all catered to be like what what you would expect to to get to get done within uh, the actual company's environment. Great, thanks. Um, and you know, we often get asked, as you know, as as uh, admissions coordinators for, from the admissions point of view, um, you know, like what's the added advantage of going through the academy course uh, when you know students might have just graduated from a diploma? Like, how does that differentiate the, the the learning differentiate from a traditional you know university bachelor's or technical degree? Well, the the biggest thing, uh, in my opinion, is just that direct contact with people actually in in, in the industry. I know when I came out when I came out of school, I had this fantasized view of what it was like in the industry, and it was completely different when I actually started working. And here, uh, instead of going to like sometimes you go to a course that's actually taught by somebody who's working in the industry, and uh, sometimes they're not. But here, you have like all all of our trainers are from the industry, from the studios that that you could potentially be going to, and also you're getting people that are currently working in the studios to come and give you real feedback as if you're on their actual projects. Nice, nice, nice. Um, and do you have any, you know, words of uh, of wisdom to pass along to an aspiring animator or someone that's hoping to possibly go through the academy? Um, you know, any any advice that you would give when they're starting the process? Uh, any advice? <laughs> you know, animation's hard, but you just gotta keep at it and uh, just keep working. Like with anything else, you just keep practicing, keep working. Every like the. You might not be right rising as, as fast as other people, but as long as you keep growing a little bit and even in like a month or in this course in eight weeks, if you look back to where you were in the very beginning, if you see growth, that's that's a that's a plus. That's progress. You just got to keep keep doing that to keep pushing forward. Awesome. Thanks. And I see Amba, you're you're nodding your head along <laughs> as you speak. So uh, Amba, why don't you tell us a little bit more about your experience, uh, you know, it, through the enrollment process and then going through the academy uh, with Jake with your trainer? Yeah, uh, so it started off with the test, um, which was very difficult, but uh, the more I worked on it and like you get feedback and you keep working on it, uh, it it was very encouraging to already start getting that feedback and working on something that I was definitely not comfortable with uh, at the beginning. Uh, and so I got passed and I got into the academy. And once I was into the academy, I think one of the things that I got from that was like this community and these friends that I now have that I actually work with too, which is super exciting. So I actually got to start working at a studio and already know people and I definitely 40 hours was what I was putting in uh, absolutely and I learned so much from all the different assignments and I was always that like slow learner it, I was always kind of like it took me a longer time to start getting better and better but after looking at all the work that I did in the academy it's like uh, so nice. <laughs> um, and now that I'm working at the studio, just seeing every day I'm getting better and better. Uh, super encouraging. Nice. Yeah. So talk to us a bit about about that process of going from, you know, obviously the academy is done online, right? So you're virtual. You are speaking with, you know, with your trainers and with with other students every day, but virtually and then uh, through the 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 hiring process as well. And then going to actually work in, in one of our studios. Maybe you can tell us a bit more about that. Yeah, so I know it's it's different for everybody, um, but for me, it took about a week. 
after the academy was over, I got contacted um, and was offered a contract, which was super exciting. I then, by the end of that month, of finishing the academy, I moved up to Toronto and actually started working at the studio. So very quick turnaround for me. I know for most of my classmates, at least in my class, we were all kind of like quickly hired and started working at the studio within like a month or so. And yeah, I immediately got put on projects and started working like just don't fast turn around. That's great to hear. That's great to hear. And um, so you talked about moving up to Toronto. So I just want to clarify a little bit. So obviously the academies are done virtually. Um, but one of the reasons why, you know, we do put a, a set location on uh, the courses is, is because that's where you would be considered right after the course. So in, in your in your, uh, you know, in, in your position, it was it was for a, a Toronto hire. Um, and how did how did that move go? How did you know, how did how did the immigration process go? Because we do offer immigration support. Uh, and uh, and help you come over. How 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 was that experience for you? Yeah, actually, immigration uh, got back to me pretty quickly, and I had everything sorted. It was very easy since I came from the states. And what was really cool is you had the option to either drive or you could take a airplane, and they paid either way. So there is a incentive, like whichever way you want, they will help you get there. So that's really nice. So I chose to drive because I wasn't too, too far. Um, and that was started a home here in Toronto. Amazing. Um, and same question back to you, basically. Are there is there any words of wisdom that you would uh, throw out to someone that's hoping to go start the enrollment process and go through the academy in, in, in hopes of coming to work for Technicolor? Uh, I'd say do it. Absolutely. Um, even if you don't get hired out of the process, the amount of tools that you're getting from this academy is unreal, uh, as well as the connections that you're going to make with Jacob and our other teachers, as well as the fellow classmates that you take the class with. Amazing. That's great to hear. That's awesome to hear. Um, proud of proud of you, because <laughs> I think <laughs> You were one of the first persons or in the first groups that that I was uh, enrolling for as as admissions coordinator back when I was uh, still enrolling. So it's great to it's great to see you here today and and thanks so much. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. So um, we also have are joined by Michael Jalbert, uh, who, um, as you said, oversees you know talent acquisitions uh, for North America. Uh, so Michael, uh, on a, um, a recruitment side, if if candidates are you know uh, interested in applying for direct positions, maybe you could uh, go into a bit more a bit more information about how they can go about that in the process there. Sure. No problem. Um, so. Um, we have a bunch of academies right now, as Heidi mentioned, but not every department has an academy. Or if you are not a junior artist and are more of a mid or a senior and are looking for opportunities, we have tons that are available. Um, some best practices that I can give um, you all on this call. Um, my first thing would be is to know what position you're applying to. Um, we do get a lot of emails sometimes from candidates saying, hey, I'm looking for a job and there really isn't um, direction on what they're looking to apply to. And in, when you do move into um, studios, we do um, work off departments and you, we look for more specialized candidates at Technicolor. Um, we do have some role, um, departments where we look for more of a generalist background, but in general, um, if you're an artist looking for a role at Technicolor, then um, specialize in something and make sure that you're applying for that specific role. Um, and make sure that when you do apply, the demo that you supply is geared to that application as well. If you're looking for a role in compositing, for example, but you submit an animation demo reel, it will be a little more difficult for us to assess, um, you know, whether or not you have the skill set for that position. Um, in terms of your demo reel, um, we look at a lot of demo reels all day. We are a team of nine recruiters and we have tons of positions to fill. Um, so in terms of your demo reel, make sure that you're putting your best work forward. Um, it's better to have a shorter demo reel than a really long one. Um, and having the best work at the beginning is always is always ideal not every recruiter will have time to watch a whole three minute demo reel and if the first 10 seconds isn't really that great we might miss out on the really good work that you've done towards the end of your demo reel 
Um, and I think the last point that I would give is just be endlessly curious all the time. Show interest in the position that you're um, that you're specializing in and get familiar with the departments to understand how the departments work with each other. Um, see who works at the company as well. Get in touch with other artists that work at the company or the head of department um, because they will be your future colleagues one day. So um, there's tons of resources out there for you guys if you want to know more about the roles that we're recruiting for. Um, you can find all of our open positions on our website, like uh, Heidi mentioned before, tcstalent.com. Um, a lot of our job descriptions will also be on LinkedIn. So if you were to search um, for jobs on LinkedIn, you can find it there and apply as well. Um, otherwise, if ever you'd like to contact us directly by email, it is tcstalent at technicolor.com. Amazing. Yeah. <laughs> Did you have something else to add? Sorry. No, sorry. I think that's it. That's it. OK, great. I actually have a question for you on my end. Um, you know, how can how should uh, potential uh, applicants or uh, once they're, they, they've they been assessed by the recruiters and uh, they've been in like uh, inv invited to an interview with uh, with either a recruiter or a head of department? Um, how should how should an artist prep for 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 an interview? Sure, um, sure. So um, uh, I can talk a little more in general about the application process as well. So um, we do need you to submit your demo reel um, and your resume, um, like I mentioned before. Um, and how it would work is the recruit that we have several recruiters and each recruiter is assigned to a specific department and that recruiter will look at your application. Um, we'll ask you more questions if we need to. Otherwise, if we like what we see, we'll invite you in for an interview and you'll have a discussion with our head of department. Um, those interviews are there to basically let you know a little bit more about the projects that we're working on, um, understand a little more about your skill set. So to prepare for those interviews, make sure you understand um, what you did on that work that you that you're presenting on your demo reel. We're going to ask you questions like, um, you know, why did you do it this way? What could you have done better if um, you had more time to complete this? Um, we know that um, especially for movies that we work on, the artistic direction comes from someone else and not necessarily you as the artist. So um, it may not look pretty, but that's what the the direction was. So um, having explanations to so that we can assess your skill set better is always ideal. Um, after the interview takes place, um, we try very quickly to get back to you with responses. Typically within 48 hours, you will get, you will get a response with, um, from us. Um, if you um, are going to move to the next step. Um, we don't usually do more than one interview, so um, after one interview, you'll, you will, you'll, you'll know if uh, you're someone that we're interested in. Um, in terms of preparing for an offer, um, the biggest thing I would say is if you are not in the location that you're applying for, make sure that you have a valid passport. It happens all the time where we send an offer to a candidate and they're super excited and then they look at their passport and expired six months ago. So um, make sure that you are ready to relocate if that's the case. Um, but besides that, um, just put your best foot forward. Yeah, yeah. Passport is definitely a must if you're applying outside of your country. <laughs> um, amazing. Um, I had another question I'm trying to remember. Oh, yeah. Um, I don't know if you can give any insight on on current positions or current projects that you guys are looking to, to fill positions in. I mean, in terms of opportunities, we have over 300 positions across Montreal and Toronto right now. Um, so there are tons of opportunities that are available. Um, in terms of projects, um, we are working on, we still are working on quite a few big ones. Um, at MPC, for example, we are working on the Lion King 2. It's not done yet. Um, so we do have opportunities there if we have some avid fans that are looking to recruit for that position. Um, and there's a, a whole series, I think we have about 14 to 16 projects going on right now, um, which is um, historically a lot that we're doing at the same time. Um, not all of them are still um, available or public knowledge, but if you would like to see what type of work uh, we're doing, um, if you visit MPC's website, um, we do have a filmography section that um, shows you all of the projects that we're working on um, and anything new where we're typically hiring for right now. Um, we don't guarantee what project you'll be working on if ever we do make you an offer. The time that you accept our offer and the time that you start, there can be many changes that can happen. There can be schedule changes. Um, so we don't want to promise anything. We will give you an idea of what we can um, offer you in terms of project, but um, just know that if you are joining us, you will be working on something exciting. <laughs> without a doubt, without a doubt. 
Um, okay, amazing. I mean, that, that was all the questions that I had on my end. Maybe Jacob, Amba, do you have any questions for, for Michael while we're all here? A question for you. How many students are you planning on hiring this year through the academy or training this year through the academy? A lot. So um, just for <laughs> so we're looking at globally uh, put, putting about uh, 3000 students through our academies globally. Uh, so there's there's a lot of courses. We're constantly adding new courses. We added uh, modeling and texturing that we weren't offering last year. Uh, we're starting the courses off in London, but there's talk of also uh, putting together a course for modeling and texturing as well in North America. Um, and we're also offering layout in Toronto and, and and, uh, Montreal as well, which we weren't last year. So it's exciting. You know, we're at, we're constantly adding courses. Um, same as in in recruitment, Michael. You know, we're we're uh, you know posting on LinkedIn uh, constantly as well. All our admissions coordinators are are on LinkedIn. Um, so for those of you that are interested, feel free to reach out to us uh, directly. You know, through LinkedIn, or you can also contact us at uh, TCS Admissions uh, at Technicolor.com. Um, but we're continuing posting new opportunities for the academy and uh, and it's definitely an exciting year in terms of in terms of uh, of the, the amount of enrollments that we're hoping to make and uh, candidates that we're hoping to hire after into into the company so uh, it's uh, it's it's gonna be a big year I think <laughs> Yeah, um, I don't know if if uh, if you guys had any any final final words that you, you wanted to put out there uh, any final comments. Um, one thing for me, even if you're not available now and you're available in three months, apply. Um, we are considering candidates anytime. We have positions open anywhere from now until the end of the year. So um, if you're considering a move to Technicolor, um, apply even if it's not instant. Um, we do have to take into consideration immigration as well. If you're coming from outside Canada, um, it might take us a while for you to get here. So um, the earlier you apply, the sooner we can move forward with the process. Yeah, absolutely. And the same goes for Academy as well. We have, you know, our calendar that's uh, been made for the whole year. We have ongoing start dates for all uh, all our courses. So even if you're, you know, still in school and graduating in a few months and you want to start to plan your next move, start to plan uh, your career and you're interested, just reach out to us. We can try to match up a start date uh, in the course that you're interested in for, for your graduation or, or for when you become available as well. So it's never too early to get your name in, to get your application in. Um, and if you're hoping to, to squeeze into a, a last minute uh, start date, uh, just keep in mind it takes about two weeks um, to go through the skills test. Uh, we'll also, you know, do a little admissions uh, interview about 15 minutes just to to make sure that everything's clear and, and to have a quick chat with you um, as Amber knows. Um, and so just keep in mind that it does take a little bit of time for the process uh, on our end uh, in order to enroll you into the academy. Um, but there's start dates all year. So um, just, you know, if you're interested, apply and, and we can we can see where, where we can put you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, thank you so much, everybody, for, for being here. It was great chatting with you. Um, and I hope that people that are going to be tuning into this, you know, it was informative and, and that it'll give them, um, you know, the, the objective to come, in, to come and talk with us and to come meet, meet with us and potentially work at, at Technicolor. So thanks so much and have a great day. <laughs> thanks, everyone. Yeah, thanks. Thank you. Thank you.